Hello and welcome to News Click, this program with Real News. We have with us D. Raghunandan, who has been studying the Indo-US relations for quite some time, particularly the defense relations. Raghu, we seem to have come across the kind of Rubicon, as it were, with this designation of India as a major defense partner. By all accounts, this is equivalent to being a treaty partner, as yes. a part of NATO or a part of what used to be Seattle Center, which don't really exist anymore. What does it really mean in the relationship between the two countries in terms of defense agreement? I think it's been a long process of standing just this side of the Rubicon till a formal declaration was made. I think this was what has been an offing since the India-US defense framework agreement way back, uh, which preceded the Indo-US nuclear uh, deal. And this is what it has all been leading up to. But at that point of time, India did not sign the Logistical Service Agreement. Exactly. Which was a standard agreement as a first step to a defense relation. Exactly. But as I was saying, I think this is what all of that has been leading up to. It was an informal bilateral agreement to begin with, but with a fairly explicit intention to gradually formalize it uh, as one went along. So this process of uh, getting India to sign the logistics agreement and the other agreements that would then form part of the architecture, which then underpins this present agreement designating uh, India as a major US defense partner, I think has been some time in coming. But you know, there's a lot of pressure for India not to designate itself as a US partner, military partner particularly, and that held back India. Exactly. Now this government seems to have decided there's no need to hold back. Yes. Initially, the sweet talk with China aside, India seems to have now taken a very decisive tilt towards the US side. We saw that in the North, South China Sea issue also. India issued a sure. fairly gratuitous statement, which finally, because Philippines sort of backed off, meant that India was sort of an outlier in in way it treated the South China Sea issue, particularly the international court verdict. So do you see that India in this case is sort of increasingly becoming a part of the US attempt to really ring in China and sort of uh, be a counterpart, counterpart to China in this area? I think this is, this is exactly what has been in the offing uh, for some time. It has now come to fruition and actually signing on the dotted line uh, to do this. And in fact, one of the many areas of uh, or activities uh, mentioned in the agreement between India and the US pertains to freedom of navigation. And we all know what that means. Uh, that phrase may not have had the resonance that it does today, 10 years ago. But being specifically mentioned today, it's very clear where this is headed and uh, what it signifies. It also, the agreement also talks about strengthening the US engagement in South Asia and the wider Indo-Pacific region, which again we know what it means uh, from a US strategic uh, point of view. Basically getting India, Australia, Japan exactly. together. Exactly. That was always the intention. Now, you know, one part of it is China. We'll come yep. back to this equation yes. later. But apart from that, in terms of normal defense agreements, the argument is interoperability of the yes. two forces. Yes. Does it mean India is now going to be a significant buyer of US equipment? Is that the implication of the deal? Interoperability, to my mind, has always meant two things. One is increased use of Indian military facilities to host US uh, military hardware. And the second part has been this issue of buying US hardware. Because how do you ensure interoperability best, which is what the US does with NATO uh, allies. So this has always been the case. But in India, uh, there is this defense technology initiative. That's a very important part of the India-US defense framework agreement, which uh, specifically talks about areas of collaboration between the US and India both for export of US hardware to India, as well as co-development and technology transfer 
of sensitive uh, defense equipment. One issue is India has always had sourcing from Russia. Do you think this would replace Israel, the US and other NATO partners as a major supplier of, of hardware in the future? Is that one of the implications? Absolutely. I think that's already been happening. India has been increasingly buying US uh, hardware and of course Israeli uh, hardware, particularly in missiles and so on. But India has bought significant aircraft uh, from the US. We've got the maritime reconnaissance uh, aircraft. You've got the heavy lift transport aircraft, the Globemaster and the Hercules aircraft. You're buying Apache attack uh, helicopters. We've just, India has just signed an agreement for M777 howitzers, uh, field artillery uh, guns. And I think there is very little doubt left anymore that India is soon going to sign up an agreement with the United States to manufacture in India either the Lockheed Martin F-16 or Boeing's F-A-18 aircraft. I think one of the reasons for reducing the purchase of Rafale aircraft from France from the original 126 down to 36 has been that India had already decided to buy American aircraft, so why buy the French aircraft now? It, this paves the way certainly for acquisition of uh, US aircraft and importantly paves the way for technology transfer. Uh, and technology transfer therefore has been specifically also mentioned in the agreement. Coming, coming back to the issue of the, of the China issue, now that's, yeah. the, that's really the big one in this mix because India initially did, under Modi, did initially make a lot of noise uh, with China wanting to be friends. Under Manmohan Singh, who was pretty much in love with Bush, which he sure. said publicly, and uh, did bring India much closer to the US. But Manmohan Singh, under Manmohan Singh, India also had very good relations with China. In fact, yes. the relations were normalized under Ch with China quite considerably. So do you think this, in some sense, is also playing out of the China-Pakistan relationship which India seems to have taken a lot of umbrage to and therefore it's in some sense India's reaction to China is conditioned with India's relationship with Pakistan. Do you see that playing a role and do you see therefore India becoming much closer to form an alternate axis against China? I see that today Pakistan is extremely close to China its military relations with China have deepened. Technology transfer from China to Pakistan, co-manufacture of the JF-17 uh, aircraft, military aircraft, all these are proceeding much faster than they had done earlier. Arguably, this is also to do with the closer India has got to the United States, the more compelled Pakistan has felt to deepen its military ties with uh, China. Uh, so it's very difficult to say which comes first. Do you think India is making, to me, a mistake by actually treating China-Pakistan as a major issue for its moves with China? So is there a reason for India to hyphenate its relationship India-Pakistan and not look upon China-Pakistan, China-India as yeah. a different issue? The more India plays the Pakistan card, the more India is limiting itself in strategic terms as a South Asian power rather than the supposed projection of India as an Indian Ocean uh, power. You can't be an Indian Ocean power uh, if you're constantly obsessed about uh, an immediate neighbor. That's been a part of the problem with the Modi government uh, and its uh, vision. On the other hand, if India has a China fixated vision and that China fixated vision is linked with an Indo-US military relationship that does not bode well for the future. Uh, it runs a serious risk of irritating the Chinese dragon. This doesn't, as you say, or when you said it doesn't augur well, it's really strategically a wrong move to link to India's... Get, yes, to get this kind of India playing its own role in that region bilaterally with countries. Say, for example, India is responding to requests from Vietnam to deepen defense relationships, which is likely to have some 
repercussions in the South China Seas, uh, etc. Pursued by itself, it won't uh, make such a big impact. But if India is seen to be doing all this as part of chessboard moves in tandem with the United States, I think that casts a very different uh, uh, look uh, to what India does strategically in this region. It will be seen to be a subordinate. Ally. That's right. One last point I thought I would make is this particular defense agreement has now been legislated in the US Congress. Within the American political context, puts the India-US defense relationship a little bit beyond the pale of fluctuations that might have been expected with the new Trump administration, because this is now part of US law. So this relationship is now uh, set for the long haul. Uh, and this is something which I think we in India need to take into account from a strategic point of view. Thank you, Raghu, for being with us. We'll continue to discuss with you these issues and other issues as, as, as they develop. This is all the time we have for NewsClick today. Please keep watching NewsClick for future episodes. Do visit our site, website, and also our Facebook page.